Hello everyone, I'm uh, back with another problem on uh, two force members. Uh, this is a problem on uh, 2D rigid body equilibrium once again. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's uh, look at this problem together. I have uh, two rigid bodies, which I'm going to draw in a minute here. Okay, so one of them is uh, an L-shaped bar. Uh, this is in a different direction from the one we considered previously. Okay, and then uh, there is another bar, uh, which is um, horizontal okay which is uh, connected in the following manner and uh, these two bars are pinned together at this particular point okay let me call this point as the point b okay so they are pinned together okay and then a couple of things are going on this uh, bar here uh, the l-shaped bar is uh, resting on a wall it's a smooth contact as we have seen in another one of our uh, problems earlier okay so this is a smooth contact and let's say that this angle here is uh, 45 degrees okay so this is a smooth wall a smooth contact wall okay then i also have the other end of this uh, l-shaped bar here and then the other end of this uh, uh, bar a b you know i'm going to call it as a bar a b and i'm going to say that okay this is uh, pinned to the wall as shown okay so this is the end a of this bar here okay and then let's say the distance is uh, one meter from point a to point b the other end of this bar here is uh, connected to a rocker okay so i'm going to draw the rocker in the following manner okay look at this very carefully okay so this is an example of a rocker okay so this is a rocker support and in a sense it performs the same duties as a roller support okay so this is a similar to a roller support okay there is not much of a difference between a rocker and a roller okay and then i have some forces that are acting one one more thing that i have in this problem is i have a cable that is running from one point to another so starting from here on the same uh, body okay there is a cable that is uh, running here so this is a cable okay and uh, let's say that uh, here are the forces that are acting on this uh, body Okay, the forces are the following. I have a force of uh, 6 kilonewtons, which is acting in the direction that is uh, shown. And then there is a force of 8 kilonewtons, which is acting vertically down on the other portion of this bar. So this is 8 kilonewtons. Okay, and then distances or dimensions are given as follows. Uh, from uh, point B to where the force is acting, okay, that distance is uh, given to me as uh, 2 meters. Okay, so this is uh, 2 meters then all the way from uh, the end of uh, the uh, force of six kilonewtons to where the uh, wall is uh, sitting you know that is also a distance of uh, two meters and uh, distance from the force eight eight kilonewtons to where the rocker is sitting is uh, two meters as well and the remaining distance which is also uh, going to be two meters okay so if i can draw all these uh, dimensions right down here okay so let me do that and this is not a straight line as usual i i guess sometimes and i tell you this is probably the most frustrating aspect of teaching is that you want all these things to happen but it doesn't happen and you know when things don't happen your way the frustration becomes obvious right <laughs> okay i'm going to draw these as dotted lines that's just me ranting about drawing straight lines um, so this is uh, two meters here I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste that here that's also two meters right there okay so fantastic we have all the dimensions marked and then what do I have to do I have to find the support reactions let me call this as uh, uh, the point D here so this is D then this is the point C okay so find all support reactions all reactions at uh, a b c and then d okay so that's essentially the problem and the problem will not tell you draw free body diagrams and so on but you still have to do it okay because that is a part of the problem it's a part of the process of solving okay once again recognize there are two rigid bodies here bar a b and then bar b c d okay so recognize 
I'm going to start off by writing my normal colors to recognize. There are two bodies. Okay, bar AB and BCD, which means that we need FBD of AB and the FBD of BCD. Okay, so these are the two things that I actually need in this particular problem. Okay, uh, so let me start off by drawing the free body diagram of bar AB and the bar BCD. Okay, so uh, here is the setup and uh, let me just look at the bar AB. Look at the bar AB. There is a force at the, there is a, a pin at A and then pin at B which means forces at only two points on this body. There are no other forces acting at any other point which means that this is going to be a two force body or a two force member. Okay, so look at the bar AB. Okay, pin at A, pin at B, which means forces at only two points on the body. Okay, no couple moments acting. No couple moment on AB, which implies that the bar AB is a two force member. By inspection, and so what is the consequence? Since bar AB is a two force member. Since AB is a two force member there will be a force at point a and point b which will be equal in magnitude opposite in direction and sharing the same line of action okay so the forces force at a and b will be equal in magnitude. This is a two force member. I just want to make sure this is written properly. Apologies. Force member. So the forces at A, force at A and B will be equal and opposite. Okay, and, and will share the same line of action. Okay, which is given by joining A and B. Okay, and we can start off the analysis by either assuming the forces to be in tension or in compression. Okay, and to start off, can assume AB to be in tension or compression okay it makes makes no difference to us okay all right so uh, once again a very quick recap i go back to my uh, uh, figure okay when i will come back to these things i look at my figure okay there is a pin at the point a which means support reactions there there is a pin at the point b which is how it is pinned to this bar b c d so there's going to be support reactions there as well which will be equal and opposite on the bar BCD, which means that if I draw the free body diagram of the bar AB, then I will find out that, okay, there are forces that are only two points on this body, so the forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and they share the same line of action, so bar AB is a two force member, okay? Uh, so that's typically what it is. So let me just draw the free body diagrams and then go on there, okay? So here is the free body diagram of the bar AB. That is not straight. Let me make it straight, okay? Then I have the free body diagram of the bar BCD, uh, which I'm gonna draw in a second here. Uh, so this is uh, BCD, okay? And uh, let me start off by looking at the forces at A and B. So this is, uh, you see, um, if I did not assume it to be a two force member, what would have happened? Here is what would have happened, okay? 
so this is uh, the force a x this is the force a y this is b y this is b x then at the point b here i'm going to have an equal and opposite b x on the bar b c d right so let me scoot this over a little onto the other side and let me bring this guy right here okay uh, this is a distance of one meter and uh, what else do i have I have some forces that are acting on this bar BCD, right? So let me uh, draw those forces out as well. So this is a six kilonewton force that was acting in the direction that is drawn here. Okay, there was an eight kilonewton force that was acting right down here. There was also a cable that was drawn. Okay, so let, let me come back uh, to that cable right now. When I draw the free body diagram of BCD, there are a couple of choices. Okay, I can cut this cable off and then I can draw the tension at this point starting from here and I can start uh, draw the tension starting from there but you recognize that this tension is just going to cancel each other off because you know there is no distance between the two forces on the cable which means in reality I don't even need to draw the cable tensions okay because they're just going to cancel each other off but I'll just still do it for the sake of uh, completeness okay so uh, there is a tension cable tension which is pointing here and right along the same line is going to be another cable tension okay so they're just going to cancel each other off so there is a tension t there is a tension t so these cable tensions cancel each other off so they will not affect the problem at all for us okay then i have a smooth contact at the point c notice that we have a smooth contact at the point c which means that my force is going to be perpendicular to the line of contact right i just drew the line of contact here in the dotted line which means that my force at that point is going to be perpendicular to that line so my force is going to be this way and i'm going to call it as n suffix c and i know that this angle is uh, 45 degrees which means that I can break NC into its components okay let me do that as well quickly this is one component here this is the other component not straight let me make it straight okay this is the other component so this is also an angle of 45 degrees so this is going to be NC cosine 45 and then NC sine 45 and then I have a rocker support let me very quickly scoot back to my figure here this rocker support is allowing me to rock back and forth so think of yourself sitting in a rocking chair you can rock back and forth okay which means that there is no restriction on the translation in one particular direction but i cannot take this and i cannot so i, I can i can rock back and forth this way that is allowed but i cannot go this way because it is pinned right i cannot go that way so there is some kind of a restriction on that and i can do the rotations rotations are allowed and so this is similar to a roller support okay so if i had to draw if i have to draw this this is going to be similar to the following okay so let me get rid of all that so that our figure doesn't look too bad okay the rocker support was uh, would be similar to this let me uh, draw it out here so here is a piece of that bar which was sticking out right and then i have the uh, rocker support that was drawn in the following manner okay so in this situation i told you that okay moving up and down is okay but i cannot take this rocker and i cannot dig into the wall here that's not allowed and then i can take this bar and then i can rotate it that is completely fine okay this is equivalent this is the same this is a rocker support this is the same as the following okay i can take this bar and stick it into a wall with some rails on it okay so look at this this is similar to the situation of having okay let me draw one more set of lines here uh, make it straight okay then let me put a few rollers inside okay so in this situation also you know this is an equivalent rocker which means that you know i can roll and this was the surface here i can go back and forth that is allowed 
I am not allowed to go this way. Horizontal motion is not allowed, but I am able to rotate. Okay, so which means that it is the same as the rocker support that we just drew. So something that you want to keep in mind. Okay, always see how the support behaves. What motion does it allow? What motion does it not allow? If it doesn't allow a certain motion, there is either a force or a moment in that particular direction. Okay, so which means that my rocker force is going to be in the following direction. So it's going to be in this direction here on the free body diagram. Okay. So that is the direction where motion is not allowed and then these are distance of 2 meters I don't even need the tension okay so I'm just going to mark this distance as uh, 2 meters this is 8 kilonewtons this is uh, 6 kilonewtons this height was 2 meters as you know and then this was also 2 meters this was the point B this was the point C this was the point D okay so here is the free body diagram of AB And then this is the FBD of uh, BCD. Okay, look at the free body diagram of AB. We have already recognized that this is a two force member, right? Uh, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to bring that down here very quickly. Okay, so this is the FBD of AB. If I and then I have my coordinate frame as well. One thing that I forgot to draw is my coordinate frame. Okay, so very quickly, x-axis, y-axis, x-axis, y-axis and then clockwise rotations okay are positive so if i look at this if i sum forces in the x direction i will end up getting a x is equal to b x if i sum forces in the y direction i will end up getting a y is equal to b y quite obvious if i sum moments about the point b what am i going to end up getting i'm going to end up getting a y times 1 is equal to 0 which tells me that a y is equal to 0 which means b y which is equal to a y is also equal to 0 okay which means that only force a x is equal to b x which I'm calling as f a b exists for a b and we already knew this right because we already said that okay there are forces acting at only two points on this body so the force must be equal in magnitude opposite in direction and share the same line of action we already knew this because a b is a two force member Okay, so I'm just going to say, okay, hey, this AX is the same as uh, FAB and BX is the same as FAB as well. So let me uh, maybe write that down uh, here somewhere. Let me see if I can scoot this up a little bit so that it doesn't mess with. This is now going to be FAB and then AX is also going to be FAB. AY is obviously zero. BY is obviously zero. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is a two force member. And you see that the line of action of these two forces is just given by joining the points A and B. So next time, you know, I don't even need to do any of these kinds of things. I can directly say, okay, hey, AB is a two force member. Just get rid of BX and BY if the situation is drawn this way. Okay. Then I go back to my free body diagram of uh, the bar BCD and I can do some cleanup acts there. Okay. Uh, I have this force BX and then I had I was supposed to have drawn this uh, force BY here as well But I did not draw it because I knew to begin with that this BY was going to be zero So I don't even need that force here BX is going to be the same as F AB Okay, so these are the forces. I'm going to take this free body diagram and start analyzing it in the uh, next page I'm still not done with this because I need to have the dimensions and so on which I, th I guess I have done that. Okay <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty much good to go for us then okay so i have all of this done here then i just have to start analyzing the forces in this uh problem uh, in this uh, figure here what do i start off by doing i can sum forces in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction okay it i don't know what to begin with okay so i can start by doing either one of the following i can sum moments okay let me start off by summing moments at c Okay, so let me sum moments 
at the point c why am i summing moments at the point c is because i'm thinking and saying okay hey look at our d our d has a line of action passing through c n c is sitting at c which means i will be able to find f a b for me okay which is the reason why i found some moments at c what are the moments i'm going to have f a b times a distance of 4 meters counterclockwise 6 kN times a distance of 2 counterclockwise then i'm going to have another one which is uh, going to be 8 kN times 2 okay clockwise 8 times 2 this is equal to 0 okay and uh, so this essentially tells me that i can solve for fab and fab is going to end up being minus 1 uh, 1 kN i'm sorry That eight times two is sixteen. Six times two is twelve. So sixteen minus twelve is four. Four divided by four is one. As simple as that. Once I have F A B, then you know some forces, some moments, or uh, some forces in X and some forces in Y, and I'm pretty much good to go. Okay. So then I'll some forces in the X direction. Now uh, let me write down my usual color. Okay. Sum of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. <coughs> Then I'm going to have um, F A B, which is going to be pointing in the negative direction, so minus F A B. Then I'm going to have minus R D, minus six kilonewtons, plus N C. Sine forty five is equal to zero. Not much of a use. So let me move on because I don't know R D and I don't know N C either. I could have done the following to begin with. I could have actually summed forces in the y direction. You know, so I'm just blindly using the equations and thinking I'm going to get something. Okay, so this is not of much use. Much use yet. Okay, so let me sum. Forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero. And I kind of realize, okay, now. If I sum a moment forces in the y direction, N C cosine forty five minus eight, and nothing else, B Y is zero, right? This is equal to zero, which means that I can actually find out N C. N C is eleven point three kilonewtons, and I could have actually started the problem by summing forces in the y direction. Okay, so something to note. Could have started my solution. by this step i do i wouldn't even need to sum moments you know then i can just sum forces okay then if i had done so no need for moment at c equation about Okay, which we had just done, but anyway, we have done it. So let's just keep on with it. So since I now know N C, I can sum forces in the x direction. So then I can say, okay, from the force balance in the x direction, I can find out R suffix D. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the following. Okay, um, I guess in a in a sense, uh, I still I still need to find uh, the moments about uh, the point uh, C, right? Uh, so i kind of uh, take my uh, words back here uh, i would probably uh, i mean I, i could have started off by summing the forces in the y direction and then moving on from there but that that still doesn't mean that i would need to not sum moments so i would still have to do that so i'm just going to take that back okay so we guess uh, we still need to need to sum moments About C or any other point. Okay, so this is I guess uh, I was just having a brain fade here uh, because you know I have three unknowns. So if I have to only use two equations and that's not the situation that is very ideal for solving the problem, right? So I still need to some moments about a certain point, either point C or some other point. It doesn't make a difference to me which point it is. Okay, but I've already done that. I have found out F A B here. Then I have found out N C right here. So I just sum forces up in the x direction, and then I get the following, right? We had this uh, equation from here, so I'm just going to throw that into the mix. Guess I'm also a little hungry. It's almost the breakfast time, so that's probably the reason why I was not thinking properly <laughs> when I wrote the previous statement right there. Uh, but I hope you get the idea. Okay, 
Um, so here is what I get. Uh, this is uh, now going to be RD is equal to FAB plus 6 minus NC sine 45. Okay, so RD after doing all of this is uh, going to end up being approximately 1 kilo newton. Okay, very quick recap of what we have done here. Okay, uh, so I go back to my problem given to me. I have a bar AB, I have a bar BCD. AB is pinned at A. The bar AB and the bar BCD are pinned together at the point B. Okay, at the point B, which means that their uh, reactions at the point B will be equal and opposite. Okay, which means that the reaction forces. on a b and b c d will be equal and opposite okay so that's something that you want to keep a note of and then i have uh, the rocker at the point d and then i have a smooth contact at c okay so first of all i recognize even before solving the problem and then i have this cable this cable is completely useless because it is not doing anything to me the tension in the cable if i draw the free body diagram is going to cancel each other off so i'm not going to be worried about the cable at all it does not do anything for me this is just for maybe decorative purposes so that if there is a crack at the point c the crack doesn't increase okay so that probably for ameliorating uh, or, or assuaging the situation at, at some other uh, instance of the problem not not something of interest to us right now okay uh, so when i look at the bar a b i see that okay there is a force at the point a there is a force at the point b which means there are forces acting at only two points on this body so this has to be a two force member there is no couple moment acting either so the force has to be along the line joining a and b how do i make sure that i'm right i actually don't need to do this Okay, I don't need to get the free body diagram of AB and go through this. This is not necessary. If I recognize AB is a two force member, I don't need to do any of these things. Okay, so no need to do this if we recognize AB to be a two force member. I just did this so that we will <coughs> know for sure and then you can see for sure that this is indeed a two force member okay and uh, so this essentially tells us that okay our suspicions are correct and in the future we don't need to do any of these kinds of things if you recognize a two force member just say it's a two force member and move on to the problem then I come here I draw the free body diagram this is no longer there by is no longer there because it's a two force member attached at the point B so I'm just going to have a force equal and opposite to the force at the point B on the bar AB. The tension does not do anything for us. They cancel each other off. There is a rocker or a roller which we said that okay behaves in the following manner. The rocker lets me translate vertically but not horizontally. I can also rotate the bar about that twin point there. Okay, so that is not a problem for me. So there is no reaction moment at the point D. There is only a reaction force. Okay, so which means that there is only one reaction force at the point d okay and i just showed you an equivalent rocker here and then once i do that i just draw the free body diagram and then i go on my merry way three equations three unknowns sum of moments about a certain point sum of forces in x sum of forces in y and that's the end of the problem okay and then we have all the answers that we had here uh, so this was fab was one kilonewtons nc was 11.3 kilonewton which is the contact force at c at the wall and then the reaction for the, the roller was 1 kilonewton. All right. Uh, I hope all of you are staying safe. Uh, take care of yourselves. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.